Hey guys, my name is Christine and welcome to my channel. I am a mom to four kids. I am a marathoner. I am a triathlete. I am a bookworm and a lemon bar enthusiast. Today, if you like meal prep videos and if you're trying to do that keto lifestyle or if you're a newbie to keto like myself, hit the thumbs up button. It helps the channel out and I appreciate it. You'll probably notice that I'm wearing a hat today. And actually I do wear hats fairly often, but not typically in videos. And today I'm wearing my Iron Man hat to brag that I've done an Iron Man. <laughs> because why else would anybody do one? <laughs> I haven't been able to sign up for any races this year, guys, and I'm feeling like really sad about it. I've done zero, zero races. I have zero on the schedule. I'm not training for anything. And so this is my way of like, one, getting my hair out of my face, and two, reminding myself that I am still an athlete, even though I'm not training for anything at the moment. Now, today's video is gonna be slightly different than my normal because we are doing a keto meal prep I know you're thinking, Christine, what the heck are you doing? You love all the carbs. And you're right, I do love all the carbs. And I'm not saying I'm going keto full time or anything like that. But what I am gonna do is prep some breakfasts, some snacks, some lunches in order to make things easier. I said in my last healthy meal prep video that when it comes to making healthy choices and you're starving and you're in the moment, it's really, really hard to be like, oh, I should probably make a salad and grill some chicken and, and cut up this avocado so I can be all health and fitness when there's a can of Pringles over there and a chocolate bar and it's so much easier. So by prepping in advance, all you do is pull it out, you're ready to go and it takes the guesswork out of it, it takes the thought process out of it and it's just easier to make a healthy choice. I'll have recipes for you down below if you guys wanna try anything out. And while I'm not a keto expert, I am always willing to learn and try new diets just for funsies. Let's get started with some breakfast meal prep and here we go. We're gonna make some smoothie packs and here are the ingredients I have. Some vanilla protein powder, choose your favorite one. I'm a huge fan of the Celiacor whey protein. I just feel like it tastes so good. Of course, anything like tools or products that I use in this video, I will leave uh, listed down below for you if you would like to shop it. I have some almond milk, almond butter, and some sliced berries of your choice. Now, I know that strawberries, as far as the berry family goes, are higher in carbs. So if you don't want to do strawberries, you can do blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, those are all fine as well. I personally like strawberries the best out of all of them, but Dave really likes raspberries, so I'll probably do some of those for him once our raspberries in our garden ripen. We're about a week to a week and a half out. If you guys didn't see me pick up this almond butter at my last keto grocery haul, I'll leave that video for you down below. Now, here's the tricky part. Since I want to like pre-build these, but I also want them to be able to dump into a blender really easily, I don't know what size I'm going to need. So it's a little bit of an experiment today. We're gonna mix these up, pop it into a Tupperware like this, I think. I feel like that would work better than a baggie, but maybe I'm wrong here. And then on the outside, I'll just do a little post-it note that says like, add a half a cup of water or something and blend. Okay, so here we go. Do you wanna try that strawberry keto smoothie? Strawberry keto? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, not bad. Pretty good? Yeah. This is only about 230 calories. Okay. I would say for you, I would need to double it because you're gonna be hungry in an hour. What do you think? Yeah. It's a winner is what you're saying. Yeah. Our next breakfast will be the sausage egg and cheese bites. They look delicious. I love eggs and sausage and cheddar and cream cheese. So I think it's a win. I want to double this, but I only have the one pound of sausage. So we'll just see if we like the recipe. Preheat oven to 350. If you guys don't have a box grater like this, I highly recommend picking one up. They are just so convenient to help you do work like this. Look at all that cheese I ended up with. Check out, I got one of those meat smushy thingies from Family Dollar. Always cut off my head, every time. Okay. My sausage is fully cooked, so I have it in this bowl with four ounces of softened cream cheese, and I'm gonna mix it with my handy dandy hand mixer. Here we go. Okay, I did wait until it was cooled off. So once I add everything else, I don't accidentally cook my eggs. So it just kind of looks like this. Couple more ingredients, one third of a cup of coconut flour. And this is like, 
one of the only times I've really used coconut flour and this smells so good. I'm a big fan of coconut anyway, but I feel like I need to cook with it more just so I can keep smelling this. It's, it's so good. Half a teaspoon of baking powder, three eggs, and one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, which I will measure just to be sure. Okay, I have one cup right here. Looks close-ish. I'm gonna mix one more time, and an important part to this is they're saying in the recipe to let it sit for 10 minutes so the coconut flour can absorb everything so it can hold its ball shape. I would say it's mostly sausage with a little bit of other stuff. I'm gonna follow the instructions, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then we'll scoop it out with our cookie scooper onto some baking sheets and bake it in the oven. After they're all mixed up and cooled off, bake them at 350 degrees for 18 minutes and then they're finished and you stick them in the fridge and do a quick microwave to warm them up These are delicious you guys go make them my whole family loved them including my kids Because I am NOT a keto expert Fortunately, I was able to take a lot of assistance from the food subscription box green chef to help me out with some of my meal prep this time. I have partnered with Green Chef in today's video, so thank you very much to them for helping out me and my channel. I appreciate it so much. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company, which is amazing, and their meal plans include paleo, plant-powered, keto, and balanced living. I decided to pick the keto meal box to include in my keto meal prep for the week. Some things that I really, really like about the Green Chef box is that the ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepared. So all of the recipes are quick and easy to follow with step-by-step -step instructions, chef tips, and pictures to help you out. The meal that I'm making for this video, the beef patties with balsamic glaze, only took about 30 minutes start to finish, including the cooking time. Another reason to use Green Chef is that it offers contactless delivery to your doorstep. I love that Green Chef allows you to stay at home and still get all of the food that you need to feed your family. And I know, I know what you guys are saying. You're thinking, well, this is Christine. I can't believe she would pay all of this money for this box. Now, don't run away. I have a deal for you guys. Green Chef is giving you guys, are you ready for this? <laughs> $80 off your first month plus free shipping on your first box. So use the code FRUGALFITMOM80 to get $80 off your first month plus free shipping on your first box. So all you need to do is go to greenchef.us slash frugalfitmom80 to redeem and to get more details. I will also have that link and code down in the doobly-doo for you so you can check it out later if you would like to. Of course, when it came time to roasting or sauteing the vegetables, I took my liberties with my handy dandy air fryer. The air fryer is one of those things in the kitchen that I love way, way more than I thought I would. I thought it was gonna be this like big gimmicky kitchen thingy and it is my favorite thing to use to quote roast vegetables. So I just threw the mushrooms, onions, and broccoli with some olive oil, salt, and pepper into my Kasori air fryer. I will have it linked down below for you. Mixed them up and threw them in about 15 minutes, like at 350 degrees or something like that, basically until the broccoli has a little bit of char on it. While that was going, it was time to mix up my beef patties. So when I served this meal, Dave's like, what is this, hamburgers without the bun? And I was like, yeah, kind of, like essentially it is. But they were so flavorful. They were so delicious. We finished them off in the oven and this balsamic vinegar with Dijon mustard glaze was so good. The flavors of this dish were spectacular. Dave's had a little bit of feta on top. I don't prefer feta, it's very stinky to me. So I left mine off. That recipe is delicious. I'm gonna be recreating that one for sure. Next up, I made some shrimp with zucchini noodles or zoodles or canoodled, <laughs> canoodled noodles or whatever you wanna call it. Oh look, there's Woody in my pan. Uh, so I spiralized all my zucchini and threw it in a saute pan with some butter and salt and pepper and then I divvied it up into these meal prep containers. Then I took the shrimp. I didn't even do anything with it, guys. I just stuck it right into the meal prep containers. I did thaw and drain it and rinse it. But I just put the shrimp right on top, squeezed some lemon juice, put some extra lemon slices inside and stuck it in the fridge. And then when it's time to eat this, you just microwave it top it with a little Parmesan and squeeze your extra lemon. Dave said the flavor on this one was spectacular. He was like, the flavor is so, so good. 
but he did really like the extra touch of Parmesan cheese on top. And this is extremely low carb. So if you have an athlete like Dave is, he definitely needs a little bit more fat. So maybe consider a side dish as well. Why is it always too close? It's too close. Speedy, Haley, we're gonna prep some veggies to go as a side dish for many of our meals for lunches and dinner. So we're gonna start on our cauliflower. Now I need to get three meals out of this. So I'm gonna divvy it up the best I can. I think I'll use the smaller head for the cauliflower mash and the larger head for uh, my two rice cauliflower dishes. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of chop it into chunks and clean it in my salad spinner. Step number one, clean your veggies, people. You don't know what's, you don't know what's going in there. You don't know who's touched it. You don't know who's sprayed it. You don't know how much dirt is in it, how much bugs are in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you can totally buy like your own rice cauliflower or cauliflower mash. Uh, pre like frozen they have all kinds of brands that you can choose from and that's good so I'm just cutting it into like chunks like this so you're totally welcome to do that if you want to way more expensive so if you have a few minutes and you have a food processor at your house you can make really quick work of this actually I think washing it's gonna take the longest amount of time but you know like I said if you're really in a bind as far as time goes just buy the prepared stuff and you're there but you know me I'm a big fan of saving the dollars <laughs> So I'm gonna do it myself. So the rice cauliflower that you buy in the store, like the fresh one at the produce section or the deli counter, all they do is chop it in this. That's it. Charge you $5 for half a pound. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. I'll wash it myself. Okay, so one head was, is about half of that. So yeah, let me fill that with water and a little bit of vinegar to get going. And then we'll do the other head. Here's the truth when you meal prep. You accumulate some dishes and then you have to wait for the dishwasher to be done so you can load it again and run it again before you can keep working. So I'm on pause right now. I'm having myself a beverage, you wanna see? Oh yeah, we're gonna do a ginger lime diet coke with a little treat. And if you've never done it, you should, you should try it. Ugh. Ignore the messy counter, I need to wipe it off. Hold up, you got poured in a glass. I'll show you why. Oop, oop. When you guys were kids, did you stick your finger in it to make it go down faster? Why does that work? I don't understand. Don't try and tell me science, it's magic. It's magic, I tell you. Oh, I love the ginger hint in this, like it's kind of spicy. Then you put a lime in your citrus juicer and squeeze it in there. Oh, yes. And then go ahead and drop it in there. Like that. Come on, like that. Yes. Now drink it. If you've not been putting fresh lime in your Diet Coke, you have not been living, my friends. Time to grind up our rice cauliflower. So I just have a Ninja blender, a food processor attachment. If you have a bigger one, that would be ideal. I'm thinking about getting a bigger food processor, probably a Cuisinart, that's what my stepmom has, and it's amazing. Remember, I'm doing two, that might be too many at once. We'll see, it, it might be fine. Please, do it, nope. <laughs> I don't have it on right. There it is. I'm doing two meals with the rice cauliflower and the rest is a mash. Maybe two thirds of the cauliflower is gonna be done like this. Bowl to put it in as I go. Are you ready? <sighs> ready, set. <laughs> wow, that was so fast. <laughs> it did the whole stinking thing, look at this. Wow, man, I guess you can load up your food processor much as you can. These are very, very small, like really finely done. So I guess if you want it not so fine, maybe pulse it instead of just run it. But I think that would be good. So let me do a little bit more. And oops, no, cauliflower overboard. Cauliflower down. We have a cauliflower down. The rest will be my mash. Come on. Ah! Here we go, one more time. Okay, that one's a little thicker than the time before, but it's still all good. Oh my gosh, I have so much cauliflower in here. So I spent right at $5 for these two huge, huge heads of cauliflower. And I'm getting a ton of food out of it. When you consider the cost of like the frozen rice cauliflower for a one pound container is, now on sale I've seen it for a dollar, but regular price, what is that? Like 250 or $3 for one pound and I have I mean, this whole bowl is full. This is a ton. This is probably at least six cups of cauliflower. Plus, 
all of this cauliflower that I still have. It's gonna go get dumped into the drink right now for cauliflower mash. Now, don't get rid of this. I'm gonna give it a quick rinse, but I'm gonna use this to make my cauliflower mash. Uh huh, uh huh, it's gonna be good. Ooh hoo hoo. If you know, you know. Making mashed cauliflower in the food processor to me is like the easiest way to get a really, really smooth consistency and not cauliflower chunks. So all I have in here is butter, coconut milk, salt, and pepper, and then I pureed it for actually quite a while to get a really, really smooth texture. Went ahead and put it in my meal prep container while I waited to make the next part, which I think you guys are really gonna like. This mashed cauliflower, making it like this, um, the, I would say the older people in my family, like me, Haley, Andrew, and Dave, love it. It's delicious. Hello, welcome to my stove. I have two pans going here, and one of them is going to be just a plain sauteed cauliflower rice with salt and pepper, and the other one is going to be a Mexican style cauliflower rice. So this one over here, I'll turn them both on right now. Okay, this one's gonna be the plain, this one's gonna be the Mexican one. So we're gonna heat these up a little bit. And into this one, I'm going to saute onions, jalapenos, and some garlic for flavor to get it going before we throw in the cauliflower. As it turns out, <laughs> I don't have jalapenos. What I do have, I, I checked my garden, and my jalapenos are like this big. They're a little too small. What I do have, are all of these shishito peppers. How hot are those? We're, we're Googling it right now. How hot are shishito peppers? Shishitos, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, range from 100 to 1000 Scoville heat units, which is hotter than bell peppers, but milder, mi what? <laughs> milder, milder than jalapenos. So it, I think I can use all of these and that would be okay. Jalapenos range from 2500 to 8000. Yeah, way less. Okay, it should taste good, but I think I'm gonna use all these. Sorry about the sizzling, I know it's loud. Here is my regular cauliflower rice with some oil, salt, and pepper, and that is all we are doing. And look, I'm using Earl to help us stir this today. So we're just gonna saute this until it's done, and then this rice will be finished for our Korean beef bowls. This rice slash to cauliflower doesn't even have rice yet. It's just the olive oil, onion, and peppers. Garlic is going in next. Garlic is here. I have about a half a cup of cherry tomatoes quartered. Let's stir those around. Hey, we have paprika, cumin, tomato paste, and the zest and juice of one lime that we are now stirring in here. Gonna be a lot of flavor in this before I even got the cauliflower in here. Oh, this smells so good. Cauliflower's in. There's a little bit of butter. They said to add salt, so we're gonna do that right now. It's a good amount of cauliflower, so good amount of salt. When this is done cooking all together, we're gonna garnish with some cilantro. Mmm, this might be my new favorite thing. Like, this looks so good. To make our ground beef Korean cauliflower rice bowls. I am just starting with about a pound and a half of ground beef in a pan with some olive oil and I'm using my meat smoosher to brown all of that up. Once it gets going a little bit, we will add four cloves of garlic, which I'll go chop up as I wait for this to cook a little bit. And then we'll add our sauce and that is all there is to this. I ended up with about actually six cloves of garlic because mine were a couple that were really small there, so we just added a few more. I love garlic to enhance the flavor of ground beef. I've started using it. Well, I've always used it. Okay, so don't don't think I haven't used it. That's a lie. But I started using it more. Like instead of one clove, three cloves. And I'm telling you what, it just tastes so good. And if you're worried about you know the garlic breath and that kind of thing, hey, if you and your partner and family members all eat it, they cancel each other out. So it's all good. Okay, we're just gonna continue browning this until it is completed, and while that goes, let's make our sauce. Garlic carcasses, I should probably clean those up. Our sauce is gonna start with a half a cup of coconut aminos and a half a cup of beef broth. And to that, we will add some ground ginger. You can also use fresh, but I don't have any right now, so we're just, I went a little heavy, but it's gonna be fine. Some sesame oil, about two tablespoons or so. Crushed red pepper flakes. Now I make mine homemade and I kind of just have the powder kind of at the bottom of this and they are very, very spicy. 
So I'm just gonna go with a small pinch because this like really, really fine powder is, uh, I mean, that'll get you. That'll get you in the back of the throat. Your lips will go numb. Ask me how I know. So we're just gonna give that a little mix of root. If you guys want a sweetener, you can do, I know the monk fruit, a lot of people like that. We're just gonna go without it this time. And as soon as the beef is cooked, this is going on top. Here comes the sauce. Once everything's all finished, we just topped it with um, some sesame seeds and sliced cucumber. So you can serve it just like this, or you can put it into meal prep containers for lunches, which is gonna be amazing because when Dave is working from home, I'm telling you, he comes up looking for something and always ends up at the fridge. I don't know if that's just, just us. Those of you that are working from home right now, do you find yourself in the kitchen a lot more often than you would be reaching for your lunch bag at work? I mean, it's true in our house. Time to make up some snack packs. Now we love cheese in our house. I don't know about you guys, but just taking the cheese and blocking it up into like little edible sections, you can recreate those really expensive snack packs that you see in the store. They're like $2 for one serving, ridiculous. All you do is hard boil some eggs in the Instant Pot, please. It's the easiest way to do it. I have this really beautiful dry salami. When I brought this home, Dave's like, oh, you got the nice stuff, yum. So I just put like one full serving of the, of the salami, some pepper jack cheese, some cheddar cheese, the hard boiled egg, and then I did some olives. These are for Dave because he loves olives and he never really gets them. Even smelling them while I was making these, I was like, ooh, barf, no thank you. But for Dave, I'll do it. Yeah, I picked up these super cute little containers at Family Dollar. I wanna say it was around $2 for the three pack. And I'm going to make a couple of little snack packs for myself because I don't particularly want the salami or the olives, but I do like assorted cheeses and almonds. So that's what's gonna go into my little packs. And they're just small enough to like throw in my purse and take with me wherever I go. Not that I'm going anywhere <laughs> much these days. There we go. If you guys haven't tried these salted roasted almonds I picked up at Sam's Club, they are delicious, like really, really good. So, oh, I have the wrong lid on that one. <laughs> Gotta make sure the colors match, you guys. There you go. Oh, my head. Yes. Moving on to some dinner recipes, we are going to put together some beef tips with gravy over the cauliflower mash that we made earlier. And we're gonna use the good old Instant Pot to do it. And if you don't have one of these yet, where have you been for the last three years? They go on sale on Amazon all the time, especially around like Mother's Day and Black Friday and things like that. The difference in cooking hard boiled eggs and dried beans alone makes this kitchen item worth it to me. I have my Instant Pot on the saute function and put some olive oil down at the bottom. You can use beef tips or sirloin tips or stew meat, which is what I have today. I have about a pound and a half. All I'm going to do is do a quick salt and pepper sear it in this olive oil right now. That's like about it. And in it goes, see it back, my friend. Oh, yes. There we go. I love that sound. It sounds like you're cheering. Yay! We get to be cooked in the Instant Pot. So basically we're just gonna brown it on all sides, add the rest of the ingredients. Now that my beef is seared and brown, I'm adding about four cloves of garlic. You can add as much garlic as you want. Actually, I didn't say to add that much, but I really like the flavor of fresh garlic. I have two cups of beef broth with xanthan gum in it for a thickener. That's gonna make our gravy. I'm gonna add a touch more pepper to that just because I like pepper, like like peppered steak, you know? I will give that a quick stir. Lid's going on. We are now going to, oh, the pepper got up my nose. The pepper got up my nose. <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh. Um, we're gonna go manual, high pressure for 20 minutes and check it then. While my beef tips are cooking in the Instant Pot, I thought I would mix up my marinade for some cilantro lime chicken. So I have Four chicken breasts here, you can also use thighs. It's just what I had in my freezer. These are butterflied, so it has made eight portions, if you will, of chicken. And I'm gonna mix up my marinade actually in this blender bottle thing. <laughs> I have the zest of two limes right here. Those are gonna go in. I feel like I've washed my hands a million times today. Like they're starting to feel dry. About a third of a cup of lime juice. Okay. These are fresh squeezed limes with these and my citrus juicer. Some 
fresh cilantro, about a whole cup, and I rinsed it and spun it dry in my salad spinner. You know, I didn't used to like cilantro when I was younger. I thought it tasted like soap. I was one of those people that thought it tasted like soap. But as I've grown, I actually really like the fresh punch of it now. So it doesn't bother me anymore. So just a loose chop, and that's all gonna go in there because the blade is gonna mush it up more than that. So I'm not too worried about it, although now it's like sticking to my hand. <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> the joys of cooking. Three tablespoons of olive oil, I'll like one, two, three-ish. And we're gonna do some garlic as well. And just like the cilantro, I'm not gonna chop it too much because the blade's gonna take care of it. So I'm gonna do like three good sized cloves. So I'm just gonna pop the skin off real quick and throw them in kind of whole and keep my fingers crossed that it turns out okay. One, two. And I'm actually not gonna cook these today. I'm just going to set them in the fridge to marinate overnight. And I'm gonna cook them up tomorrow for like a really easy dinner with a cauliflower Mexican rice. So all I have to do is throw these on the grill and boom, finished. A little bit of salt. That looks good-ish. Uh, some pepper. That might have been too much. <laughs> About a teaspoon of ground cumin. We're just gonna like something like that. Okay. I think a little more olive oil just to get it going on the blade. And I'm going to put that on my ninja base and mix it up. This smells amazing. Holy moly. I don't know that I have enough of it. Maybe I do. Look at that beautiful green color. Man, even my breakfast smoothies don't have that beautiful green color. They always turn like purple or brown or something like that. So I'm trying to get every last inch of deliciousness out of here. These chickens will get stirred around, cover it with plastic wrap, and they'll go in the outside fridge. I love having just some marinated chicken ready to go. Sometimes I don't even like to pre-cook it. I just like to have it marinated. So the night of the dinner, I can just throw it out. It takes 10 minutes on the grill. Dinner's ready as long as I can have everything else prepped. So there's my marinade. Beef is done, so, ooh, hot, so hot. Ah, oh, okay. Don't stand right next to it, you'll get a facial. Hey, it looks a touch watery to me. I'd like it a little thicker than this. So I just put it back on saute, and I'm gonna saute it until this gravy's a touch thicker, like I just get the excess water out. And then we will be done with the beef tips. Okay, this is real life, okay? <laughs> I know this isn't like the prettiest presentation ever, but this is the beef tips with gravy over the cauliflower mash. What's nice about Dave and I both working from home is we don't actually have to portion it out into individual containers. I can use this really big one. So this is probably about four servings in this container. And all we have to do is like, scoop a section out, put it in a glass bowl, stick it in the microwave, heat it up, and we're good. And I can even throw on some sugar snap peas on the side out of my garden because they are producing like crazy right now. I don't know if that's keto or not. I'm gonna keep eating green vegetables, you guys. They're good for you. There you go. Beef tips over cauliflower mash, and that one is going in the fridge. Just as a reminder, all of the recipes and any special tools that I used in this video, I will leave down in the description box for you. So go and check it out there. Once again, if you guys want to try a Green Chef box for your keto lifestyle, use my code down below. I'll also put it right here for $80 off. And for someone that likes saving money, that's quite a deal. And then the best part is you can keep the recipes they give you and then recreate them at home later, which is what I've done over the years. I've collected quite a binder of their recipes. It's really fun to go back and make some of your favorite recipes again. Thank you so much for joining me. I loved hanging out with you guys today. These meals were so delicious and I hope that you try them. And if you do, let me know down below which ones you have done and which ones are your favorites. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.